you want to find out how to get the super formula off the line without spinning your tires like this guy overheating them and it's really twitchy for the rest of the lap where you're probably going to spin anyway or be this guy that faces the completely the wrong direction at the start ruining your perfect qualifying lap so let's try and try and figure out if the launch control system actually works does it prevent you from dying and does it actually get you a quicker launch off the line so let's crack on and see what happens Right, then the absolutely first thing you need to do is load up a session. Just a quick test session. Go to options, then down to controls. And what you need to look for is this track control, con sorry, track control arm. So that is the one you need to set a button to and to actually arm the system. So click on it and just press the button and you'll be absolutely gold. And the other setting that might be quite useful, if you scroll down a little bit, you've actually got track control set. This is a increase and decrease button. So again, click on it. It asks you to do the one for increasing. So tap the button and it'll uh, change over and then you can click done and it'll ask you to decrease the value. So that one will actually change the launch control setting rather than actually going to the black box. So we've nicked a uh, LMP2 dash from the old uh, Z1 dashboard and you can see our tick over there is about 2,800 RPM. So I'm on rev, uh, start limit one and you can see there at 6,500 and as I crease it notch by notch, even though it tells you there's 7,000, 7,500, 8,000, we're on start number 5, 8,500, and then we're up to 9,000 RPM there, which if I turn it off, the actual red line's only 9,300 anyway. So it gives you, it basically limits the rev limiter in first gear. So that could help us because we're not getting to the high end of the power band where it's conditioned out its 560 odd horsepower. But the one thing I am going to have problems with is this is it's going to instantly disengage the, the rev limiter in second gear. So you're going to be getting it going in first gear on the rev limiter, changing into second, and then you're going to be, no matter what your throttle position is, you're then going to have the 9,300 full rev limit. So that's going to be an interesting one to get used to. But let's let's throw some science at it and see what happens. So I'm on rev uh, launch control map one. Going to turn it on. Going to do my uh, dual clutch start. 45% is what it's on. So full, well, full-ish throttle. I'm going to do half throttle because obviously it's tuned. as soon as I change into second gear, it will disappear. So let one clutch go. Change into second. And then feed out that clutch. And we've done 0 to 100 mile an hour and 4.7. And 9.6 did the quarter mile in. So this is me just looking back uh, while I'm editing this video. And it's one of them things, I didn't think that was a particularly good start there, but it didn't do too bad. I did the quarter of a mile in like 9.6. So the next test that I do, which is me just reversing back because that's how I do these things. Obviously, it's a little bit tongue cheap because obviously now I've got a little bit more tire temp. So again, you need to take that into consideration when you are adapting and doing this. Every time you start a tire, there is a bit more heat in the rear tires, which is obviously going to help the start. But this start was me managing it and it wasn't that much quicker. Right then, so let's do my normal clutch without the rev limiter and see if I can kind of nail it because uh, without the um, without launch call, because I, I think it's going to help in certain circumstances, but the moment you change the second, it disappears. So I'm kind of like, I don't think I'm using it strictly correctly. So learning curves, please, uh, will be welcome in the comments, definitely. So uh, yeah, first gear, 45% on the clutch. Give or give or take a little bit of throttle. See, to me, that feels a little bit better, me managing everything rather than worrying about hitting the rev limiter. So, yeah, that to me seems a little bit... Makes more sense, in my in my opinion. Now, was the second launch easier? Probably not. The first launch did feel a lot, lot easier. But the second launch was obviously a tenth quicker, but is that me getting used to the car? 100% it is. To me, I don't think there's a lot in it at the moment. Uh, we do try it on uh, map six a bit later on, but this is me just trying other stuff out, really. So this next launch is going to be uh, launch control one and uh, just single clutch. Right then, for tits and pickles, let's turn it up to Mac. Uh, let's, no, let's leave it on low. Let's leave it on one. Let's... Only use one clutch, so rev the nuts off of it, one clutch, see if it still wheel spins at the lower RPM. It probably will, if I'm brutally honest. So one clutch in, we're not using the dual clutch, we're just using the normal clutch. First gear, engage the launch control, rev it. Yeah, you still go absolutely nowhere. And then when you change into second gear, Armageddon. <laughs> 
Just for the sake of testing, we'll try it on the map, a launch map six, which is basically four RPM. So basically it's, it's going to be the full blown beam start. So launch control, dual clutch this one. Now that actually felt okay. Now that actually felt a lot, 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 lot nicer. I didn't feel like I was uh, hitting the rev limit too much. That was that was quite nice, not going to lie. And this is where the penny sort of drops, that using the launch control, it's easier to manage that first gear wheel spin. Yes, it turns off in second gear, and you still need to deal with that, but it gives you one less thing. It gets it off the line, gets it moving, and then you, you're rolling, so you've got a little bit of help with the wheel spin. Yeah, I'm going to do that one more time because I, I, I did like that start. It felt really good. I don't think I was a bit nervous about giving it full beans, but it seemed to work. So uh, launch control, dual clutch, first gear. Nine point six. So at this point, I went around the track to do a little bit of sightseeing. Um, just to change the scenery, really. I didn't. I was getting bored of start, finish, straight. So it gives me time to talk as well. <laughs> um, so in a nutshell, I was finding that the launch control was actually doing something in the end. You can see on my throttle trace that I was using way more throttle in first gear than I would on a normal sort of dual clutch start. So I definitely think it is reducing the... I don't think it's reducing the power. I think it is actually a traction control system. It would make sense because that's what it's labeled as. That it is actually minimizing the wheel spin on the rear tires. Yes, you can still lose it. And as soon as you change the second, you're back to normal full Armageddon mode. But it is way, way more manageable with the launch control system engaged. Now, this is the part where I'm going to sort of ditch the dual clutch and see what we can do if you don't have a clutch at all. So this is what I'll test now. Yeah, so let's try, I think, like what it's meant to be maintained. So we're going to have a rev limiter on first gear. We're on map four, which I think is somewhere in the middle, to be honest, because I think if you don't have a clutch, I think it's I'm trying to find a way for you guys to to try and make starts easier because it's going to be really annoying for one if you qualify in the top five or even on pole, and then it all disappears in, in you know, less than half a second because you've got a bad start. So I'm going to try something weird. It's map four. Launch control is on with first gear. We're just going to hold the brake and then full throttle, which is, is cheating in this car, I know, but we're in a sim, so we, we can cheat a little bit. So I'm quite heavy on the brake. I'm full throttle. Obviously, I'm going to hold the steering wheel, and I'm just going to launch it away. Now, I had to lift for the full throttle. That's 3.5, 5.3, and we're 10.2. So again, we're not too bad. With a bit more practice, I think we'll be able to nail that. All right, what I'm aiming for is kind of like quarter of the mile in under the 10 seconds. Because uh, if I if I nail me, the fastest start I've got so far is 9.5. And I think that was using um, uh, just the dual clutch myself uh, without any launch control. But I'm thinking if I can try and get into the 9.9s, nine 9.8s, nine at least going over the quarter mile, which could be, you know, down into turn one, you've only lost a couple of tenths of a second, which, okay, if the guy next to you gets a good start, he'll be alongside you. But at least it's not... You know, falling backwards and doing donuts. That's what I'm kind of aiming for here. So we're number actually I'm gonna turn that up to six because we're dry. We should be using traction control six. So let's try that. Give you a bit of revs in in first gear. So we're fully in the brake, no clutch, uh full throttle and full brake, and we're waiting for the green lights and we're away. Get it rolling. Yeah, maybe I should activate the system first. That's probably gonna be advised. Uh right, load of brake. Full throttle, and we're away. Ah, it's going to be slower. 10.3. It's that initial... I'll show you what it is. I'll show you what it is, right? I'll show you... Do you know what? I'll show you what it is. I will show you what it is. It's that initial bit where... It bogs down, and you need to lift off, otherwise you start wheel spinning, right? It's this bit. It's there. It's while that eye racing clutch comes off. If you nail that, I might actually just just watch that clutch. No. Two thousand years later. Right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this brake clutch thing. Uh, if it kills me, I, I'm gonna get it right. Uh, launch match five seems okay. 
Um, I'm going to keep it in there. Full brake, full power. It's watching the eye racing auto clutch thing. Oh, that felt good. Come on, come on, be another nine. Nine, nine again. I think with a bit of practice, I can get that down to a nine, seven, which means there's only two tenths, I reckon, off, off my optimal with a dual clutch. So I think that's going to be a win there. So obviously dual clutch, I think, will be the way forward. Or if you have a clutch pedal, you can do my little trick. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous video where I introduced this car and did a little first look, um, if you, uh, you need to short... Uh, no, fully map your foot pedal clutch like you normally would in your pedals, then go into options and controls and there is a second throttle, brake and clutch option. Set your second clutch to a button. At that point, you use your foot, uh, if you can see it on screen, you use your foot to get it to about 45%, which I think that says 46, it's on a race up there. You hold it and then you press your clutch button. Now your clutch button will bring you up to 100% clutch. Rev the nuts off of it. Well, don't rev the nuts off it because that would be a bad one. But yeah, get your rev point, get to your rev lights and hold it there. And then when the green light goes, let go of your button and then it will transfer to this. Uh, it'll be like this, actually. It'll do like that. So then when you let go of your button clutch, it will do that and you'll then be immediately on the pedal. So that would be the ideal when you feed out that pedal nicely like that. So that's the idea of using this sort of second clutch on a button. There we have it. So that's a few starting procedures that we got out of the way. I'm a little bit more confident as well starting this car. One thing I would know is go in and practice. If you don't have any clutch at all, go in and practice. Somehow set up a race with either AI or go into a hosted race. Or if you're still in week 13, I know this when this comes out, this week 13 is probably nearly very over. Um, but yeah, try and go in a race and hold the brake. The brake holds the car in um, practice so it should hold it on the start line as well but I'm just a little bit nervous if it doesn't and we all get a load of black flags and jump starts it really ruins your first race of the car which will then you know it's, it's that whole thing you don't want to start a first race badly do you so yeah just double check it for us either set up a, uh, a fake AI race where you can just do a stand and start and see what happens but please 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 test that out if you don't have a clutch otherwise even though I did my fastest with a dual clutch without launch control I do think it's definitely worth having because it does definitely limit the wheel spin in first gear. You can see by how much throttle I was putting in with the launch control system activated using the dual clutch. It was way more than without it. I was doing like 20% without it. And then with it, I was up to like 70%. So, so it's just watching that second gear. Same going back to the brake one. It's just watching when that iRacing clutch comes off. Because um, that will also be another dependent thing is what iRacing clutch you have. Uh, some people have auto blip and things like that. But I will set this car to anti-stall. So when inevitably I spin in a race, it won't stall the engine, which is the idea there otherwise thank you very much for watching hope this did help you out and a little bit of understanding about the launch control system and uh, otherwise we'll go from there i'd like to thank everyone in discord as well because i literally did ask them how the hell does this work because i didn't even know uh, myself that was an actual button in there so you know who you are but thank you very much indeed uh, do appreciate your help with that one and uh, yeah spread the knowledge that's always the wise thing with iRacing try and help out wherever we can but otherwise if you did like it don't forget to like and subscribe to that love your youtube stuff and i'll catch you on the next one